My name is Daisy Badger. I am 14 years old um, and I live in Church Lynch. Church Lynch is a small farming village about two hours from London. Our village, with only a hundred people, is a quiet, peaceful place where families like mine have lived for generations. It's the kind of place where everybody knows everybody else and we all look out for each other. But in 2001, our community woke up to an event that changed us forever. Foot and mouth disease is a virus which infects the, the mouth and the feet of any cloven hooved animals, uh, sheep, cattle, pigs, goats, deer, where you get sores which could progress into very severe infections which cause a lot of suffering for the animals and in which case it would be just kinder to kill them. What? What? The foot and mouth virus affects livestock but does not affect human beings except in rare cases. But foot and mouth came on the heels of another cattle-related virus, BSE, or mad cow disease. So, the government's response was swift and decisive. Wow. And at first people thought it, it, the government would be able to, to deal with the situation and stop the spread. Um, so at first we weren't really concerned, but then... Um, it did spread, and it spread very quickly, and it came to the area without any warning, I suppose. Farms were cornered off, and people, people's movement was stopped between the villages. Just down the back here, there was... Um, my uncle was keeping some, some cattle down here, and the government officials in their white coats and their vans, they came down and they, they tested them for the virus, and they... It was confirmed that they did have foot and mouth disease and so they had to clear the whole area. They, they slaughtered the animals down there. The carcasses were left there for a few days before they actually came to pick them up and take them away. It, it was horrible. It was a horrible time for us. You can have some breakfast if you want. Yeah, even though, even though it was quick, and they may have thought they were doing the right thing and trying to, trying to stop the spread of it mm. by killing, killing the infected animals or not infected animals. I think it was more like a, like a panic from the government that they had an, another, another serious disease or virus going around the cattle. The thing for all, you know, humans catching it, that, oh, I don't think that ever, ever I came into anybody's right. mind. Yeah. Because, bear in mind, we have had foot and mouth over here before and that was never an issue then. But... In the period of about ten months, the government slaughtered and burnt more than six and a half million animals. Many people, like my uncle, had their entire livelihoods destroyed and have since had to leave farming. Communities suddenly lost a large part of their local economy. Neil Kernock, a neighbour of ours who has a farm just down the road, has just dropped by. I had a suspect case on our farm, so-called, so I couldn't move from the position I was on. And when I was being tested, I was up on a hill with 120 ewes due to lamb in a week. So in the end, I had to stop up there for three weeks with my livestock. Just here? Just here for three weeks. I was allowed to come home for an hour a day just to get changed now. I had to get a licence to go home. Really? From the from the ministry, oh so oh. it was all over the top. What got me and the family really was not knowing exactly what was happening. Yeah. You know, one day you heard one thing, and another day you heard another thing, and you didn't know which to listen to. Yeah. Do you think, as a result of foot and mouth, um, what has happened? Do you think it's changed the way people farm, uh, traditional traditional farmers? The farms will be bigger. I don't know if that's going to be for the good in the long run or not, but a lot of smaller farmers, like I said, have given up. In February 2001, many people in England lost control of their lives. It is very important that we begin to talk about what happened. Since the outbreak almost three years ago, there has been very little dialogue about foot and mouth. 
this can be as destructive as the outbreak itself. Like my family over breakfast or Neil talking with other farmers, we need to exchange knowledge and experiences and build solidarity in order to preserve our communities and our way of life.